I've called this a reintroduction to trigonometry because you met trigonometry last year. Do you remember having a look at all of the right angled triangles and that kind of thing? Uh, we have a look a lot at triangles because if you have a look at the name of the topic, and this is the color I will choose, uh, trigon is just another name for triangle. Tri meaning three, uh, gone meaning, well, we get, it's the same kind of thing that is under the word polygon, right? Which just means many. Uh, so this is a three-sided shape, a trigon, just like a hexagon is a six-sided shape and so on. When you see ometry, like optometry or geometry or uh, what else has metry on it? Uh, hmm, sure there's more. Didn't I say geometry? Say it again. I said, I said geometry, right? Um, what does it mean? What does it mean? Uh, we have a system called the metric system. And what does it have to do with? It has to do with how you measure things. Very good. So this just means measurement. So trigonometry is all about measuring triangles. And the reason we care so much about triangles is because triangles are everywhere in nature and the world, even places you wouldn't necessarily expect, which I'm very excited. Year 9 trigonometry pretty exclusively focuses on just the triangles. But within this topic this year, we will show you, we'll start to give you a sense of how trigonometry, right angle triangles, are hiding in all kinds of unexpected spots. So let's remember, and that's why I call this reintroduction. If you have a triangle like this, it's right angled, and over here you've got a, an angle, and uh, we use Greek letters a lot because um, sometimes we've got Greek letters and we've got English letters and we've run out of English letters. So that's a theta over there in the bottom left hand corner. In this right angle triangle, you can describe each of the three sides in relation to theta. Okay? Now the easiest one is the hypotenuse because the hypotenuse is always in the same spot. Which one is it? It's uh, the hypotenuse? It's, it's this one, it's the longest one. It's opposite, yeah, I think is what I heard, opposite the right angle. So let's mark that in, hypotenuse. Like so, okay? But then you've got the other two sides and we're trying to understand their position, because that's actually what trigonometry is about, position, in relation to theta. See this one down the bottom? In fact, let's do better than this one down the bottom. Let's call this triangle A, B, C. So do you see AC down the bottom, okay? It's right beside theta. So we have a technical word for beside. We call it adjacent. Like so. And then lastly, BC is right on the other side. We call this the opposite. Very good. I'm going to write it vertically. Okay. So wonderful. Now, we understand or we use trigonometric ratios. The ratios are called sine, cos, and tan. Uh, the sine is short for sinusoidal. The cos is short for, you never, you never learned that, right? The cos is short for cosine, and the tan is short for tangent. Uh, we'll come a little bit later on as to why they are called what they are called. But just like logs, just like logs, just like square roots, they attach to a number. So you can't say sine <laughs> equals something, but you can say sine of theta. You see how sine is an operation, it attaches to an angle, just like cos attaches to an angle and tan attaches to an angle. Now, last year you learned a mnemonic device, a memory device for remembering which ratios match with which sides. What was the device? Sokotoa. Let's all write it up the top. Um, you might like to write it like this. Like so. Some people also, you may have learnt it written like this. Either of these is fine. Um, the second one, what it helps you remember, is the order of the ratios. So sine is opposite on hypotenuse, cos is adjacent on hypotenuse, and tan is opposite on adjacent. Okay? So either of those is fine. Let's have a look at what it means in this particular triangle for this particular angle. Sine is opposite on hypotenuse, and I went ahead and I named all of these um, 
vertices, which means I've labeled the sides. So what's the name of the opposite side? BC. And the hypotenuse is going to be AB. That looks good. Cos is adjacent on hypotenuse, so therefore I can say it's AC on AB. And then lastly, tan is opposite on adjacent, so it's BC on AC. Okay. Uh, I want to also point out at this moment that while we can think about tan as opposite on adjacent, you can also think about tan, I'll put this in another color, blue will do, you can also think about tan as sine theta on cos theta. Did you notice that? Have a look at the top two fractions there. If you did sine theta on cos theta, see how they both have AB on the bottom? They both have AB on the denominator. So therefore, if you divided one by the other, ABs would both disappear. They'd cancel each other out, leaving you with BC on AC, just like you saw in the first place. Okay. So, this is all fine. But if we have a look at the same triangle, there's the right angle in the bottom right-hand corner, there's the theta we were just talking about, but there's another angle up the top. So I'm just going to call this, I'm going to introduce a new letter for you. I'm going to call this guy phi, another Greek letter. So it's just a circle with a line all the way through it. Vertical line. <coughs> Excuse me, not to be confused with the Deathly Hallows. Phi is another angle, same triangle, so I'll label the, the, all the points the same. A, B, and C. But remember I mentioned to you that trigonometry is a lot about position. So therefore, if you're thinking about phi rather than thinking about theta, then the names of the sides kind of rearrange relative to each other. Except for the hypotenuse. The hypotenuse is still the hypotenuse. But now the opposite and adjacent sides are in different spots. Because opposite and adjacent are position dependent words, right? What's adjacent to me right now? The whiteboard. But that's different to what's adjacent to you depending on whatever, wherever you are, okay? So over here, now, where's the adjacent side? Which one is it? You can name it. BC is the adjacent side. Let's label that. And likewise, the opposite side isn't where it was before. The opposite side is AC. So let me say that again. Opposite and adjacent are position words, and they're relative to where you're thinking about. Okay? I often like to think about, you know, you're a guy and you're standing up here, and you're, um, you're looking at this triangle from this position, and for some reason you have a line right through your face, and um, from there, what's next to you? It's this side. What's opposite you? It's this side. So let's write for this particular angle, Sine phi, cos phi, and tan of phi. Okay, one at a time. Sine? Opposite on hypotenuse. AC on AB. Okay. Cos phi will be BC on AB. And then lastly, yeah, AC on BC. Okay. So, not too complicated an idea, and of course we could change all of these into numbers dependent on how big or small our triangle is. Okay.